This video is brought to you by Privacy.com. Privacy.com lets you buy things online using virtual cards instead of real ones, protecting your identity and bank information on the internet. Sign up for an account right now and my viewers that are new customers will automatically get $5 to spend on your first purchase for a limited time. So check out Privacy.com slash Brian Tong. What's up, Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Bits for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. Hey, we're still in Techtober, the month where every company in the tech world, they decide to drop their latest goodies on us. But you know what? We're still waiting to see if Apple actually does anything this month, specifically the rumored 16-inch MacBook Pro and the rumored AirPods Pro. Now, the latest report from Digitime says that the 16-inch MacBook Pro that we have been waiting for will launch by the end of October, and we're really close to getting there. Last week, Icons discovered inside of the macOS Catalina 10.15.1 beta revealed what the new 16-inch MacBook Pro will possibly look like with its larger screen and slimmer bezels next to the current 15-inch. Now, this design, it isn't a surprise. It was leaked from Apple. It looks exactly like you would expect, but, you know, I love that extra inch of screen real estate. And these leaked icons weren't just put there by accident. They were labeled with 16 in the file name and then referenced as an unreleased MacBook Pro 16.1 model number. Now, reports claim the new 16-inch will have a screen resolution of 3072 by 1920 and an updated scissor keyboard design, which should be a lot more reliable. The new laptop should also see either Intel's latest Coffee Lake processors or even Ice Lake. Intel's yet to announce any Ice Lake chips that are ready for the higher-end MacBook Pros. But... That's not all, folks. Apple leaked the new AirPods Pro or AirPods 3 or whatever they want to call them inside of iOS 13.2's beta already. We saw that. And let's be real. You know that they cannot resist from calling them the AirPods Pro. Now, the China Economic Daily is reporting that the new AirPods Pro will also be launching by the end of October with a new Pro name added and a price tag of around $260, which would be about $100 more than the standard AirPods without a wireless charging case. And I know we've already seen what is believed to be the new design, not only from Apple's own leaked icon, but from the leaked parts. And if the original AirPods were modeled after, let's say, electronic toothbrush heads, which they were, the AirPods Pro, they're like graduating to a new and improved hairdryer design aesthetic. Now in the latest iPhone SE2 reports, Ming-Chi quotes as Apple will use a new liquid crystal polymer antenna design for an improved wireless transmission for the phone that is expected to arrive in the first quarter of 2020. LG, they are also in talks to be the supplier for the LCD displays that will be used in the next-gen iPhone SE. Now, the SE2 is expected to have a similar design to the iPhone 8 with a 4.7-inch display and a Touch ID home button, but with an A13 Bionic chip and 3 gigs of RAM internally, the device is expected to start with 64 gigs and 128 gig storage options and then come in space gray, silver, and red. Also, you know, the name SE2 might not even be the final name of the device in case some of you were like really stuck on that name because I know how some of you all get. All right, we've talked about 2020 as the year the iPhone makes the next big jump, but 2020 is going to be a big year for Apple, period. After Bloomberg's Mark Gurman reports, Apple is targeting next year to release their new augmented reality headset. Now, the time frame could be pushed back if they need more time for development. Apple's AR glasses are expected to pair wirelessly to the iPhone and let it do a majority of the heavy lifting with its processing power to deliver content like messages, emails, maps, and more. Now, it will also possibly be able to play games on the headset, and Apple's reportedly considering even having an app store for the headset itself. Okay, also, like, I'm just thinking out loud right now. How perfect would it be for Apple to release a pair of AR glasses in the year 2020? Like, I could see it, the headline, your 2020 vision is here. Yeah, yeah, get it, right? Glasses, 20. 2020 come on come on you know that's good it's really good like that's why they pay me the big bucks to be on their marketing team right now yep apple you could send me the check like right now i'll be looking for it in the mail thank you but you know what that's not all is 2020 it's the target for apple to finally release an apple watch with sleep tracking and then in an even bigger move max with arm-based processors custom designed by apple are expected for 2020 as well sheesh then you throw in the new iphone that's going to take the next leap and what a beast of a year if all that happens. And you know what? There's also two new Apple-related products that were just dropped for all you beast athletes out there, and I love them. Check this out. H2O Audio recently debuted their waterproof headphones called the Interval Swim Headphones for Apple Watch Swimmers. 
Now this is pretty awesome, and they are claiming that it's the only waterproof headphone system for Apple Watch, a clip that houses the controls and Apple Watch face attached to the back of swim goggles with Bluetooth 5 earphones that are connected with a wire but are paired wirelessly to the Apple Watch. Now I used to swim when I was younger and I can just like only imagine what it would have been like to have something like this back then. I, it's kind of one of those things where you take a moment and then you just realize how amazing tech can be when you see something that just wasn't possible years ago. So I absolutely love this. And then another fitness smart device that I love, the Jax Jocks Smart Kettlebell that connects via an app on your iOS device to track your progress. It's a freaking smart kettlebell that caught my eye even at CES this past year. I like ran into it. So, you know, I had to check it out. When you guys and gals hang out on the show floor, like sometimes things hit you, it's like unexpected. And I came across this kettlebell and I'm like, what is this thing? So I have Kira here to represent. Who are you here with? What's up? I'm here with Jack Shocks. So this is actually the first smart kettlebell ever in the whole world. They basically change his weight from 12 pounds all the way up to 42 pounds in six pound increments. And it's all digital, but the internals are mechanical. Um, and on top of that, it comes with a corresponding app. So it actually tracks all of your reps, all of your movement, all of your weight, even the power that you're lifting. And then it also gives you rep integrity. So if you're doing like a kettlebell swing, like, like it knows that. how tall you are and it knows what a kettlebell swing should look like. But if you don't reach the top, it won't count that rep. So you can't cheat. So basically we're at 12 pounds right now. If I lift it up and you look at the inside, this is an aluminum shaft that picks up and drops weights according to the digital interface. So it all changes weight within three seconds. And then this is really cool. This is an accelerometer. It's basically the same thing that's in your iPhone that counts your steps. And this is what counts all of your reps, which is really sick. And I promise you it's 18 pounds now. Well, let me, let me that's heavier. I mean, do you want to do that? I mean, <laughs> don't hurt yourself. Come on, look. You think this thing can't handle 18 pounds? It can. So we actually just launched on the 7th, January 7th. So it's available now. If you go on jackshocks.com, it's $349. So you know, I we, we saw some of the cool demos here, but I don't know about I don't know about that I don't know about that Corey guy. I think I could take his job. I mean, I'd love to see you. Let's go. Oh, Corey, Corey, you better watch yourself, cause uh, I'm coming for you, bro. No way, not today. No, today, today. Okay. We'll see. Yeah, yeah we'll see. Well, that escalated quickly, but it's honestly a cool, smart gadget, and I can't wait to get back to CES this year to really find more gems like that. All right, thanks again to privacy.com for sponsoring this video. When you sign up for privacy.com, it allows you to pay and transfer money online using virtual card numbers instead of your real credit or debit card information. With privacy.com, you won't have to worry about changing your cards if one of them gets hacked. You can also download a Chrome extension so you'll have access to your cards all the time, and then you can add any you'd like for different services. So for example, when I buy something like movie tickets to the rise of Skywalker, Star Wars, can't wait, I can click the red icon and then it gives me the option to choose which privacy card that I wanna use. I select the one I want and it's using a virtual card number, not my actual one for the transaction and voila. So go check out privacy.com slash Brian Tong and sign up for an account. As a special treat for my viewers, new customers will automatically get $5 to spend on your first purchase for a limited time only. Yup, that's free money. Go to privacy.com slash Brian Tong and sign up now. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for this week. If you like this video, you know what to do. Thumbs up, subs up, and hit that notification bell. Ding! To get all my videos when they drop. Plus, check out my weekly Apple Bits XL audio podcast where we just like dive deep into all the latest stories, including the ones that you won't find here. So thanks for watching. Take care, everybody. We'll see you soon. Peace.